So we're going to be going through through these daily daily readings in the first reading and in the gospel some long discourses. Saint Stephen is going to be the one who's going to be speaking for several different days about this big homily in a sense showing how ultimately Jesus Christ is the one who fulfills all the Old Testament and that the very Pharisees that are trying to stone Jesus are living out the very stiff-necked nature of the people in the desert. And so that's what we're going to be seeing during that time. But then in the gospel, which I'm going to focus on today, we start hearing the bread of life discourse. And this is something that ultimately will lead to the first moment in which actual disciples, people that were following Jesus, walked away from him on account of one of his teachings. It's important for us to remember that, that most of the time people walk away, but for other reasons. But those who are actually following Jesus, they recognize what he's saying about the Eucharist, and they say, this is too hard, and they walk away, and Jesus allows them. So that's where we're going with this, with these several days. But let's see what's happening in this first part. Because what Jesus does is he walks with them, and he's leading them ultimately to make a choice about the depth of what he's actually saying. And so he's starting, first of all, with the miracle of the loaves and fishes, feeding of the 5,000. And the people, they were filled with it, they were satisfied, they were excited because the Messiah, when he would come, one of the signs is that he would bring the bread from heaven. He would be like a new Moses that brings the bread from the sky. So they want to follow him. They think he's going to be the king. And he will be, but not the way that they think that he's going to be. And so they, they finally find him. And they're not sure how he got where he got. They say, Rabbi, when did you get here? And this is what Jesus said. He says, Amen, amen, which means whenever you hear those two words, it means, listen up, this is really important. Truly, truly, amen, amen. You're looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. So the miracle of the 5,000 was not to be something primarily that would just satisfy their bellies. It does that. But the Lord is saying, if you have eyes, you would see something deeper. You would discover, in a sense, a sign like an icon of something physical that's happening, almost like a, like a sacrament, something that's happening that's physical that you can see, taste, and touch. But if you have eyes to be able to see beyond that sign, the sign is leading you to something deeper about me, is what the Lord's saying. And throughout the book of the, the Gospel of John, there's all these times where it says, this is the first sign, this is the second sign. But he does a whole bunch of miracles, but there's certain ones in which John is saying, these are signs, these are windows into be able to see, to be able to see more and more who I am. And this one where he's leading them to say, ultimately, that I am the bread of life. I'm the one that will satisfy the deepest hunger, but it's not a physical hunger. And he was sad because he was saying, you are being satisfied physically, but you're not aware to that spiritual hunger of which I have a deeper bread. And that's when he goes on saying, do not work for food that perishes. In other words, don't focus on just the physical satisfaction of your stomach because that'll go away in a couple hours. It's a fleeting thing. He says, don't work for that. Don't put everything, don't put all the chips in the game just to be able to have a full belly. And isn't that sometimes what we do? We maybe focus on living for that moment, 
What's the most pleasure I'm going to get? What's the most satisfaction? What's the most right here, right now, but it's a fleeting thing. And the Lord is saying, don't put the chips in the game for that. There's something greater. Work for something that lasts longer. He says, but the food that endures for eternal life, something that when you're filled with it, it's not going to dissipate. It's not going to literally pass through your intestines and out the latrine. It's going to be something that will last for eternal life. It says, and then he says, which the Son of Man will give you. In other words, Jesus is saying, I want to give you a food that will take away the spiritual hunger and it will endure for eternal life. And then he reminds them, he says, this son of man that is going to give you this gift, it's on him the Father, God, has set his seal. In other words, he's put his stamp of approval and ultimately that is that bond of love between father and son. That's the Holy Spirit that came down in the baptism in the Jordan in which the Lord is saying, this is my son. Listen to him in whom I delight. And so then they say, well, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? They're hearing that he's saying, you need to work for something deeper. And he says these words, the work of God is that you believe in the one he sent. That's the way that he sees himself. I am the one sent by the Father. I don't do things on my own will, but I do it always in union with the Father. And in a very real way, he's saying, I am the very image of the Father's love for you. I am the face of the Father. Whoever has seen me, Philip, has seen the Father. So the one being sent, the one who has that seal of the very Holy Spirit, is the one alone who can lead us to see the face of the Father, which is ultimately what our hearts are looking for. We're orphans. We're outside of the, of the home. And Christ is going to get us like the lost sheep to bring us home to the house of the Father. And when we see Jesus Christ's face, he leads us deeper and deeper to discover the face of the heart that fills our heart, the Father's heart. And it's going to be through this mysterious bread of life, this mysterious flesh and blood of the Son of God, that will ultimately link us back to have communion, to have oneness, to have true reconciliation, eyelash to eyelash, with our Heavenly Father, to be scooped up again, to be embraced, and to have this Father's rich smile just pouring out upon us, saying, you're my child. You've become part of the body of Christ, and now you are mine. It's very much like a fulfillment of the book of the prophet Isaiah. You are precious in my sight. You are mine, and I love you. So this is what the Lord is going to be offering. And the sad thing is there are many in this, in this moment in which as the Lord goes deeper and deeper, they can't go any further. It's kind of like a scuba diver. The Lord is saying, there's a treasure down here. And you keep going deeper and deeper. And then someone's like, uh, this is getting a little too, there's too much pressure right now. Uh, I can't really do this. You're saying to eat your flesh, drink your blood. I I'm going to go back up to the top because it's a little more easier up there. I'm just going to do snorkeling. And so we have to ask the Lord, Lord, give me that grace to just keep going deeper. And when I feel that sense of the pressure of saying, can I do this? It's like, you can't do this on your own, but God wants to give this gift of faith. This is the work of God that you believe. So it's something that you can't do on your own. To believe in the one whom the Father sent is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. So ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Father for the Spirit and it will be given.